Hi folks, this video is in response to Brian Denlinger's two-part video entitled What About Interracial Marriage? A brother in the comments section of the video that I made responding to Denlinger's idiotic statement mentioned to me about that. At first I really didn't want to see it because I knew that, well, let's be frank, Brian Denlinger is a lying heretic and I didn't want to hear what he had to say. However, my curiosity got the better of me and it's only by the grace of God, and let me emphasize, it is only by the grace of God that I did watch the two-part video in its entirety. I can tell you that I was like a volcano awaiting to erupt because I was absolutely seething in anger after what I saw. What's even more galling and sickening was that Brian Denlinger had a smirk on his face and presenting the scriptures to prove that God is against uh, interracial marriage. People like that I just want to hate and despise with sheer intensity to be quite honest with you. I did look up the scripture passages he used in his satanic video. I really have no other way to describe it. It really is satanic. And I did read different commentaries on those scripture passages that he used. And I came to the conclusion that Brian Dellinger truly is a liar and he is so dead wrong. I not only looked up the scripture passages that he used, but I also looked up two New Testament passages that he didn't use. And they're both in the New Testament. Let me share with you one of them. And I strongly encourage every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to look this scripture up that will clearly prove that Brian Denlinger is truly a liar and he is so wrong. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? That's what I see when I read those passages for myself that Dengler used to prove that God is against interracial marriages. Folks, I want to present to you the King James Bible truth of that the problem has absolutely nothing and I repeat nothing to do with ethnicity skin color or uh, nationality the real problem is sin and by the grace and power of God I will scripturally prove it once again please look up with me the scripture passages that I will be presenting in this video and see that what I'm saying is true. All right, here we go. Exodus chapter 34 and verses 10 to 17. Exodus 34 and verses 10 to 17. And he, God, said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people which and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord for it is a terrible thing I will do with thee observe thou that that which I command thee this day behold I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite take heed to thyself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee but ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, 
and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons and their daughters go a whoring after their gods and make thy sons to go a whoring after their gods thou shalt make thee no molten gods the next verse is Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verses 1 to 4. The sacred text says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, Thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly Moses must have alluded to what happened to the children of Israel when they mingled with the Moabites and Shittim Numbers chapter 25 and verses 1 to 3 and Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods and the people did eat and bow down to their gods and Israel was and Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel the ninth verse of this chapter tells us that 24,000 people died in God's judgment by a plague that really that really does tell us how serious it was those three scripture passages clearly tells us that God didn't want the children of Israel to intermingle and intermarry with those pagan nations. Was it because of their ethnicity? No, absolutely not. It was because of their idolatry and their fornication that would lead them astray from the one true God. Exodus chapter 20 and verses 2 to 5 says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. We have read in Exodus 34 that God's name is Jealous and that he is a jealous God. God is living, active, and all-powerful, and he wants to be the sole object not only of Israel's worship, but our worship as well. Second, Israel was the chosen nation of God, and he desired them to be a holy people. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6 says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2 says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 26, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine the point is that God chose the nation of Israel out of his own sovereignty and love and he wanted to use the nation of Israel to reveal himself to people of all nations this proves the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 2 and verse 11 rings true for there is no respect of persons with God. As already mentioned, God didn't want the Israelites to intermingle and intermarry with the pagan nations, not because of their ethnicity or skin color. It had to do with their sin. In other words, it is a spiritual issue and not a physical one. Brian 
Brian Dillinger made it an issue of one's skin color, kindred, or nationality in that two-part satanic video out of his own disgusting self-righteous pride and his personal bias. Exodus 34 and verse 10 to 17, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 to 4, and Numbers 25 verses 1 to 3 all present the principle of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. I see that same principle in Ezra chapters 9 and 10, which I'm going to use the term to describe people like Brian Denlinger. They're, they're known as race-mixing haters. And race-mixing haters like Denlinger used to prove that the King James Bible is against so-called race-mixing. I also see that principle in Nehemiah chapter 13 and in 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1 to 13 where Solomon married foreign wives 700 times and had 300 concubines. Now, I want, us to, I want us to consider something very important. I've already mentioned earlier that when Brian presented scriptures to prove that interracial marriage is a sin, he did it with a big smirk on his face as if he was relishing in what he was doing. And it made me so angry that I really wanted to, de what I really wanted to detest his very existence. Here's another thing that really made me both angry and sickened. Denlinger had the sheer audacity to tell King James Bible-believing Christians to apply what the Jews did in Ezra chapter 10 when they put away strange wives. Let's read that together. Ezra chapter 10, and we will read the first 14 verses of that chapter. Ezra chapter 10, verses 1 to 14. In Chronicles, <laughs> Ezra chapter 10, here I am. Ezra chapter 10, and verses 1 to 14. Now Ezra, now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him uh, out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children. For the people went very sore. And Shechaniah the son of Jeho, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law arise for this matter belongeth unto thee we also will be with thee be of good courage and do it then arose Ezra and made the chief priests the Levites and all Israel to swear that they should do according to this word and they swear then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went into the chamber of Joanan the son of Eliashib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water. For he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem. And that Hussler would not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that have been carried away then all the men of judah and benjamin gathered themselves together unto jerusalem within three days it was the ninth month ninth month on the twentieth day of the month and all the people sat in the street of the house of god trembling because of this matter and for the great rain and Ezra the priest stood up and said unto them, Ye have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. 
Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without, neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Let now our rulers of all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city and the judges thereof, until the fear of our God for this matter be turned from us. In the 53rd minute mark of part two of his satanic video, Brian Denlinger said that Christians who marry other Christians who are not of the same kindred, skin color, or nationality have committed a great sin against God and that we must put them away. In other words, get a divorce so that the wrath of God will be turned away and then find a mate of the same nationality, kindred, or skin color and you'll get God's blessing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is totally criminal, inexcusable, intolerable, and totally satanic. Big time. We have looked at one verse in 2 Corinthians 6.14 that proves and exposes Brian Dillinger as a liar and a uh, race-mixing hater. Now we're going to look at another. And to those who are really praying about divorcing your Christian spouse because of skin color, nationality, or kindred, I pray that God will answer your prayers when you read and hear what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And again, I strongly encourage you all to look it up for yourselves and not just read it, but believe it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verses 10 and 11. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Let me read that again, so hopefully it will sink in. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Now wait a minute, Brian Denlinger said, suggested in this satanic two-part video that we must apply Ezra 10 by putting away strange wives because they're not of the same nationality, skin color, or kindred, and that we must pray about it. Folks, there is no need to pray about this. Listen to what God Almighty said through the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. In fact, read the entire chapter, folks. Brian Denlinger clearly forget the fact that we are in a different dispensation known as the church age. And Ezra chapter 10 simply don't apply to us as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're a Bible believing Christian and you have a spouse that is unsaved, no matter what nationality, skin color, or kindred, please don't listen to what that liar and race-mixing hater Brian Dinlinger said in his satanic video by getting a divorce. Don't listen to what he said. He's a liar. Please take heed to these words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verses 12 to 15. Again, please look it up in your King James Bible for yourself and believe it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verses 12 to 15. But to the rest, speak I, not the Lord, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. 
For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God hath called us unto peace. Now please understand that the Apostle Paul is in no way, no way whatsoever encouraging Bible-believing Christians to seek a mate who is not saved. The only quote-unquote interracial marriage that is, a, that is a sin in God's eyes is when a Bible-believing Christian who is saved by the blood of Jesus Christ marries a non-Christian who isn't. This is why Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. The New Testament reveals the Old and the principle of 2 Corinthians 6.14 is there repeatedly in the Old Testament. And as Brother Kevin Zacker in his video about kindred marriage beautifully put, it is not the skin problem, it is the sin problem. Amen, brother. Amen. Second, if we take to heart Brian Denlinger's suggestion to Christians to get a divorce simply because their Christian spouses are not of the same kindred, nationality, or skin color, we would obey, excuse me, we would disobey our Lord Jesus who spoke these words to the Pharisees. Matthew chapter 19 verses 3 to 9. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command, it, command to give a writing of divorcement, or put her away? He saith unto them, Because of Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, and verses 10 to 12 says, And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he, Jesus, saith unto him, unto them, excuse me, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. <coughs> Excuse me. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 6, What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Incredibly, out of his own race-mixing hatred and bias, Brian Denlinger is trying to put asunder my marriage simply because I supposedly married a strange wife who, because she is not the same skin color or nationality as me. That for me is really offensive as he has really crossed that line and I deeply resent him for that. If you're a Bible-believing Christian who is married to a fellow believer of a different skin color, uh, kindred, or nationality, I know for a fact that you feel the same way as I do. I did not marry a strange wife. I married a blood-bought, Bible-believing Christian woman whom I love with every fiber of my being. And for Denlinger to suggest that we apply what the Jews did in Ezra chapter 10 by putting away our spouse because of, because of race mixing is absolutely satanically stupid, inexcusable, and intolerable. Out of his own bias and his hatred for race mixing, Denlinger has violated this carnal rule of dispensationalism. 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brian Denlinger certainly didn't rightly divide the word of truth when he said that we should apply Ezra chapter 10 by putting away strange wives who were not of the same kindred, skin color, or nationality. That was a different dispensation. We are in the church age. As Gentile Christians, Paul is our apostle, and we need to take heart what he said doctrinally about marriage in his epistles. One of them is Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 22 to 33. Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 22 to 33. In Colossians, Philippians. Here we are. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Let's start by reading verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband, husbands in everything. Everything that is good, obviously. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loved his wife love himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourisheth and cherisheth it even as the Lord the church for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 18 and 19 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Let's turn to Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verses 1 to 7. 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verses 1 to 7. The sacred text says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning or of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do will, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Now, folks, can you imagine if we apply what the Jews did in Ezra chapter 10? There would be division, confusion, and heartache. 
We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, that God is not the author of confusion. The Lord Jesus said, Wherefore, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. By saying that Christians who marry a fellow believer of a different kindred, skin color, or nationality committed a great sin, Brian Denlinger is creating division not just in Christian mixed marriages, but also in the, in the body of Christ. And that in itself is a real great sin. And he will answer to God for that. When we read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we see that we are at liberty to marry a Bible-believing Christian, no matter what the skin color, nationality, or kindred. 2 Corinthians 6.14 and 1 Corinthians 7 verses 10 and 11 are the verses or the passages of Scripture that Denlinger didn't use in his two-part satanic video on interracial marriage. I wonder why. The last one that I will be presenting is the clincher. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. Let me read that passage again one more time so they will sink into your heads, into our heads. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord. Folks, I see nowhere in 1 Corinthians 7 where it says I have to marry a Christian woman of the same skin color, kindred, or nationality. Christians have the liberty to marry someone of a different skin color, kindred, or nationality. And yet, race-mixing race Haters like Brian Denlinger want to take away that liberty by using these two passages of scripture in Acts 17 verses 26 and 27 and Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8. Let's look at the first one. Acts 17 verses 26 and 27. And I'm going to read I'm going to begin by reading verse 24. Acts chapter 17 and verse, beginning with verse 24, the sacred text says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing, that he, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. <coughs> Excuse me. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 8 says, When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now, I do agree with Brian that well, the one world government under Antichrist calls for the end of national sovereignties and boundaries when we're told in the Bible that God divided the nations and set the habitations. Genesis 11 tells us that Nimrod confounded the languages at the Tower of Babel where Nimrod led the rebellion in building it to reach heaven. I am 100% in agreement with that. In agreement with that, excuse me. However, Deuteronomy 32 verse 8 and Acts chapter 17 verses 26 and 27 both have absolutely nothing, nothing to do with marriage. In this case, Inter kindred marriage between Christians. I don't think Brian really understands that marriage is between one man and one woman in holy matrimony, not one nation marrying another. Last time I checked, 
the word nation is defined this way in the Webster's 1828 unabridged dictionary. Nation is defined this way, a body of people inhabiting the same country or united under the same sovereign or government. The King James Bible tells us that we as blood-bought Bible-believing Christians are part of a holy nation and King Jesus who is Almighty God from all eternity is the sovereign ruler. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. It is very interesting that Webster defined a nation as a body of people united under the same sovereign or government. The church is the body of people united under the eternal sovereign ruler, King Jesus. Galatians chapter 3 verses 26 to 28, one of my favorite Bible verses. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 11 to 22. Please look up with me that passage. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 11 to 22. The sacred text says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Praise His name. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20 says, And having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by Him, I say, whether they be things in earth, or things in heaven. The point is that the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, broke down the barriers through His life, death, and resurrection. And yet, race-mixing haters like Brian Denlinger not only want to rebuild the barriers using Acts 17, 26, and 27, and Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, out of his hatred for race-mixing, but also to take away the liberty that we have been given in 1 Corinthians 7 
to marry a fellow believer no matter the skin color, kindred, or nationality. Absolutely sickening. You know, it's very ironic. Brian's wife in the video entitled Natural Free Birthing for Bible Believers, she said that the Lord is the ultimate matchmaker and that we should let family or friends tell us who to marry. And yet she and Brian said basically that Christians should stick with their kindred, nationality, or skin color when it comes to marriage. They are totally ignorant of the fact that one, we can't control or we can't help whom we fall in love with, and two, that God in His sovereignty, providence, and grace may have the perfect match in someone who is of a different kindred, skin color, or nationality. I said it before, and it bears repeating again, the only quote-unquote interracial marriage that is a sin in God's eyes is when a child of God marries outside of his or her holy spiritual kindred to someone who is a child of Satan. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6.14. The issue is spiritual compatibility. A Christian who marries a non-Christian would have serious problems resulting in the saved man or woman to be led astray from the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible-believing Christians marrying each other of a different skin color, kindred, or nationality is not, is not a sin. Folks, this is Bible. It is biblical for Christians to marry other Christians of a different kindred. This is Bible, folks. And yet, out of his own personal bias and his hatred for race mixing, Brian Denlinger deliberately lied to the body of Christ by saying that it is. People like him can never, he can never prove that Christians marrying each other of a different skin color, kindred, or nationality is a sin. And he never will. Folks, our spiritual identity in Christ is far more important than our physical or national identity. To all those who are born in Christian mixed marriages and you're, you're kind of half and half, or unfortunately what the world calls half-breeds or whatever, I want to say this, and it bears repeating. Your identity, if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're a child of God. You're an ambassador of Christ. You belong to the Father through faith in Christ. Your identity in the Lord Jesus Christ is far more important than some family tree or some genealogy. Don't get caught up in that stuff. Get caught up in the things of the Lord. Get caught up who you are in Christ Jesus. And right now I'm, I'm going to present some Bible verses that will help us understand who we are in Christ Jesus, no matter what the nationality, skin color, Romans chapter 8 and verses 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 4 to 6. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Revelation chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, 
to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation chapter 5 and verses 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our gods, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Glory to God. In my last, in the video that I made about um, Denlinger's idiotic statement, uh, a brother who unfortunately is a race mixing hater wrote in the comments section of that video, responding when I resp again responding to Denlinger's idiotic statement. He said, "Well, actually, he asked, what's the big deal if Brian Denlinger is against?" quote unquote interracial marriage well I'm going to show you why it is a very big deal by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 12 through 27 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 12 through 27 please look up that Bible passage with me 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 12 to 27 the sacred text says for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. The so-called race mixing haters like Brian Denlinger are a cancer to the body of Christ because their poisonous teaching would bring division pitting Bible believing Christians against each other. I see that clearly. I mean, I've seen in, my, in the video that I made on Denlinger's idiotic statement, sadly, I had debates with uh, people who unfortunately take the side of Denlinger. And it's really sad. It really is sad. He really is creating division in the body of Christ. I hate it. And above all, our Heavenly Father hates it. What good parent doesn't hate to see children arguing and fighting amongst themselves. Race mixing haters like Denlinger are totally ignorant of the fact that number one, we are all colored because every one of us have the same skin pigmentation called melanin. M as in Mary, E-L-A-N as in Nancy, I-N. Melanin. 
the reason why you see me being dark skinned or you want to call me black or you want to call me brown call me whatever you like is because I have lots of this melanin this skin pigmentation called melanin race make number this solution number two race haters like Denlinger are ignorant of the fact that all the so-called quote-unquote racial distinctions or differences are only minor and this leads to number three that they don't matter because we are one in Christ race mixing haters like Denlinger focus too much on the physical outward appearance and are ignorant of the fact no matter what kindred we are the real problem is spiritual because of the presence of sin in the world race mixing haters like Brian Denlinger are to be marked and avoided because they truly do bring division and confusion in the body of Christ Romans chapter 16 and verses 17 and 18 now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple it is not absolutely not a sin for Bible believing Christians to marry a fellow believer of a different skin color nationality or kindred please don't believe the satanic lie of Brian Denlinger in his two-part video on interracial marriage please believe the truth of God's holy word King James Bible Romans chapter 3 and verse 4 says yea let God be true and every man a liar what I said already needs to be repeated one last time the only interracial marriage that is a sin in God's eyes is when a Bible believing Christian marries outside of his or her holy spiritual kindred to an unbeliever 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 18 be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness and what concord hath Christ with Belial or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God hath said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people wherefore come out from among them and be separate saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters saith the Lord Almighty Amen your comments and insights are always welcome I love hearing from you and love interacting and answering your comments questions and um, your insights I really enjoyed that very much thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I pray that God will use it to encourage and strengthen you my dear brothers and sisters in Christ I love you all so very much this is why it matters to me because I love you my brothers and sisters in Christ and again I pray that God will use it use this video for his glory once again thank you for taking the time to watch this video God bless you all and until next time Lord willing may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all Amen and I love you guys